Have you ever driven your car to a place like Walmart to buy a bottle of Snapple iced tea? <laughs> <laughs> you went inside, you came out, 20 minutes later, you couldn't find your car because you can't remember where you left it. <laughs> that is what I call shift happens. <laughs> yes, shift happens when you are not paying attention. And when it happens, it just doesn't land you or your blackberry in your pot of soup. It may land you at the back of a patrol car or even in jail. Mr. Toastmaster, let me share with you how a shift that happened to me almost got me in jail. Back, way, way back, when I still had a head full of hair. <laughs> I also had a Mazda 626 named Jezebel. <laughs> Jezebel was an old car. And you know, when a car is that old, if something is not breaking, something is jacking, or something is breaking. <laughs> so one day, Jezebel was creaking, and I took her to my mechanic, who said, looks like you are having a transmission problem. So I paid him to fix the car. He promised the car would be ready. On the day the car was going to be ready, I went there to pick up the car. The car was not ready. And the mechanic said, I'm sorry, you get it tomorrow. I said, tomorrow I have an important meeting to attend. I have to have a car today. <clears throat> and he casually picked up his car keys and tossed them to me. He said, drive my car. I'll find another car. When you come tomorrow, you can get your car. Guess what? A Mercedes-Benz car. <laughs> I've never driven a Mercedes-Benz car before. I started thinking how I was going to take this car for a joy, joy ride. I jumped in the car. Oh, it feels so good. Wow. Drove the car home. But soon, that joy ride turned into a nightmare. You see, in my apartment, we have to have a sticker on every car. And because this car didn't have a sticker, I couldn't pack it in my assigned spot. So I packed it in the visitor spot. Went inside, the following morning I was ready, fully dressed, ready to go to my meeting. I stepped out, the car was nowhere to be found. It was gone, gone. My head went into a tail spin. What happened? By the time I calmed down enough to call police, it was already 15 minutes gone. Then they called me back 10 minutes later, asking me questions. How, what happened? Okay, my car was stolen. What brand of car? Mercedes-Benz, what year? I don't know. <laughs> what model? I don't know. <laughs> because I was clueless. 15 minutes later, they called me back to tell me that the car was not stolen, it was towed away. By that time, I had called a cab to come and take me to my meeting. So instead of the cab taking me to my meeting, the cab had to take me to the storage where the car was taken. What had happened was, you see, the previous night after packing the car and went inside, I didn't know that I should have pressed a button. <laughs> Instead, the car was inching its way back <laughs> gradually until it blocked the driveway. <laughs> and the security guys came, they couldn't identify the car, they couldn't identify the owner, so they <laughs> towed the car away. <laughs> the car drove me to the storage where I had to pay through my nose to get the car. And since then, my nose has been running. <laughs> Is there any Toastmaster here in that business of towing vehicles or storage? I don't think any Toastmaster will ever engage in that type of heartless, <laughs> mean-spirited business. Those people are mean. If they have ever taken your car, you know what I'm talking about. Well, I got the car and drove like a maniac to my meeting. I got there in good time, you see. I usually set my watch about 45 minutes ahead. So you don't want to look at my watch if you are going somewhere because it will drive you crazy. So I still had 
had a good time on my hands. I was the last, I was the first person there. I should be because I was going to be the speaker anyway. <laughs> the security man let me in through a side door. The program was fantastic. At the end of the day, when I came out, the parking lot that was virtually empty in the morning was now full. And as I stepped out of the main door, I saw my beautiful Mercedes-Benz car right there. And I went straight for it. <laughs> Put in the key, no lock, no dice, no deal. What happened? By then, it was 96 degree temperature, 80% humidity, and I was sweating like a Thanksgiving turkey. <laughs> I took out my jacket, took it off, placed it there, trying to figure out how to get the car open. It wouldn't open. What's going on? Just as I was fumbling around, there was <laughs> from both sides of the parking lot, police officers. Put your hands behind your head. <laughs> you got a report that you are trying to steal a car. Me? Steal a car? No. It's my car. What year is your car? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> what model? I have no idea. What's the license plate? For the second time in one day, I couldn't explain myself to the police. <laughs> because I was clueless. That's what I call a shift. It's like when you get married. <laughs> well, guess what? They placed me in the back of the patrol car, ready to take me away. And this man walked up to me and said, Young man, you trying to steal my car, eh? <laughs> and he was breathing from ear to ear like a monkey eating banana sideways. <laughs> I see that was the first thing he has ever done in his life. Just then, a police officer said, let me have your keys. He went over there, turned the car key on, and the car started. My car was parked about two rows away. <laughs> if I were like you, I would never drive a car with a shift stick again. <laughs>